the response of the judiciary, it was according to me, it was equally disappointing. Though the act clearly applies to courts, which are obviously included in the definition of public authorities, most high courts did not appoint even the public information officers, I mean, within the prescribed time. And many of them framed, who appointed uh, PIOs, framed rules which effectively deny the information to the citizens. I will give one sample of the Delhi High Court rule. I mean, the following information shall not be disclosed. Such information which is not in the public domain or does not relate to judicial functions and duties of the court and matters incidental and ancillary thereto. The rule means that no information will be given about the expenditure incurred by the High Court from public funds and about any appointments or transfers or about any recruitment. This was a total violation of RTI Act, which where the disclosure can be withheld, withheld only on certain grounds specified in Section 8. No public authority can refuse to disclose information which does not fall under the exemptions permissible under Section 8 of the Act. It is reported, I have put in the newspapers, that the former CGI recommended to the government that so far as the Supreme Court is concerned, the decision of the Registrar General of the Court should be final and not subject to any independent appeal to the Central Information Commission. It was reportedly recommended that the Chief Justice of India should have an unfettered right to interdict the disclosure of any information, which is, in his opinion, might compromise the independence of the judiciary. The former CJ had gone on record that even the disclosure of income and assets by judges or the formation of any independent disciplinary authority over judges would compromise the independence of the judiciary. Now, as Mr. Gunsarvi has told you, this issue is now referred to the larger bench yesterday, and I read in the newspapers that 19 high courts have responded that, the, that they would not prefer to be, uh, to be covered by the by the Right to Information Act, I don't have the exact response of the High Court, because, but the, it seems that this was in the context of the information relating to the elevations and transfers of the judges. Anyway, it is just going by this, it is obvious that no information about the complaints against judges, about their incomes and sets, would be available under the Right to Information Act. Thus, while the Supreme Court decrees that even candidates <coughs> aspiring to become public servants like MLAs and MPs would be required to disclose their assets when it comes to sitting judges, such disclosure would violate the independence of the judiciary. The, uh, I may refer to the today's uh, the reporting about the about the observations of Justice Garchu about the about the uh, Allahabad I quote. I'm not, I do not wish to comment make any comment on the but uh, I mean, uh, a time has come that the, that the judiciary has to be, the functioning of the judiciary has to be made more transparent. And it's not the issue of the compromising the judicial independence. Uh, in Subhashan Ragarwal's case, he said that the, that the transparency would lead to more accountability and ultimately the, it would lead to the, it would enhance the uh, in the uh, image of the judiciary and the really the transparency and the they should go hand in hand the transparency and judicial accountability of the one act and the judicial independence of the other. Now on this context, in this context I may also refer to Subhashudra Agarwal's case. Now there the question was uh, the Mr. Subhashudra Agarwal's query was whether the judges of the Supreme Court have furnished the information about their assets to the CGI. There was a resolution passed by the uh, Chief Justice of Conference in 1997 that the, all the judges of the Supreme Court and the High Courts will furnish information about their own assets, about the assets of their their, uh, uh, their spouses and, and, the fam and the dependent members. And the, if a, the only query was whether such information was was, uh, was published. The stand taken by the by the, the by the registry of the Supreme Court was that the CGI doesn't fall within the purview of the uh, of the RTI. 
finally this was this particular uh, uh, defense was given up and the and the several uh, contentions were raised uh, I mean uh, the, uh, some of these uh, uh, amongst other arguments it was contended that the information sought related to subject matter which was an in-house exercise and thus could not be said to be held under that. It was also argued that the code of ethics formulated by Chief Justice's conference pursuant to which the asset information was published and moved by the course. The, these are all code of the, the, the code of this code of ethics or judicial conduct, standards of judicial conduct, which were laid down in the Chief Justice's conference. And every judge is expected to follow this. But the stand taken was that this it has only a moral force, it has no binding force. And ultimately this has led to the, the now the uh, judicial standards and the, uh, and the uh, accountability bill 10,000. I mean that is I mean likely to be introduced in this winter session, where the uh, this judicial standards or judicial code of ethics is made a part of the statute. So the argument for CPI was rejected. It was held that there was a right to such information. The information emanated from an instrument which had not just moral force but had legal value. More importantly, the information requested under the application was not of such a nature which would compromise judicial independence. Now, pending these proceedings, the Supreme Court already judges already published their uh, declared their assets on the website, Supreme Court website, and some of the high courts for this week, the Lee High Court and two other high courts published their religious uh, assets on the website. Now the I, think, I really don't know why should the independence of a judge be affected if his or her wealth is made public under the RTI Act. And what Mr. Farin even said, I mean, I just would like to quote his words. If the credibility of the higher judiciary is to be restored, as I believe it must, since without the higher judiciary, our constitution simply cannot work. It is essential that every judge of the Supreme Court set an example and voluntarily make a public disclosure of his or her assets on the website of the Supreme Court law, law or no law. This would then be dutifully followed by judges of the High Courts on the salutary principles stated in Bhagavad Gita, whatsoever great men uh, were and the other men also do the standard they, they set up by that, by, by that the people go. So transparency, accountability, and efficiency are the pillars on which a judiciary rests in a democracy. I mean, in, in uh, Subhashad Raghavar's case, we quoted uh, Edmund Burke. He said, all persons possessing a portion of power ought to be strongly and awfully impressed with an idea that they act in trust and they are to account for their conduct in that trust. <coughs> so this I come to the some other objectives of the act. And there are two aspects which really, uh, which are very important. You see, the, it is necessary to expand the scope of public authorities liable to disclose uh, this information. This should include political parties, religious and charitable organizations, NGOs, and other private bodies performing functions of a public nature. For example, I mean, uh, pharmaceutical companies, providers of health and education services, housing societies, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, IT uh, the mobile phone companies, I mean they provide the, I mean these are all public services. So they should be included within the ambit of the, of the RTI. Now this, why this expansion is necessary? Because this uh, increasing number of public functions are being performed by private bodies. It is imperative you remember the all the days when the, the, I mean the telephone and many other facilities, I mean, and even the, all, all this was the government. Now it is mainly, health was a, mainly it was the government hospitals. Private sector was not, has not grown so much at that in those times. But slowly it is now the, it's being shifted to the private players. So it's necessary that there has to be inclusion of those private bodies which are carrying public functions. Then secondly, it is necessary for the state agencies to take a proactive approach for implementing Section 4B of the Act. And according to me, this is the key of the, of the Act. And even the Information Commission should be proactive, 
it should insist for this implementation of the people uh, fight section 4b of the act see if you put this information on the on the <coughs> in the public domain there would not be much scope for the approach for the citizens to go to the information commission with their grievances see each department whether it's a police station whether it's a hospital whether any other department should have its own template i mean you should that template should be the information should be disclosed as per the template for instance in the hospital the government hospital or a, a, a also a hospital which is supported by the government but in some way i mean there has to be or even a private hospital there has to be that it is maintained their stocks in a in a particular way so why it should not be disclosed on day to day basis what is available what is not available all this information should be available to the public so the posting of more and more information on the in the public domain should be the should bring the I mean, great success to the the very concept of right to information act with this i come to the last uh, subject which i would like to say which i'd like to speak about is see the pendency before the uh, uh, accumulation of pendency before the uh, uh, state information commission and the, some of the state information commissions and and the cic also i i, I immediately acknowledge that the i mean uh, coming from judiciary uh, i know there really is no moral right to comment upon the pendency before the information commissions I mean, judiciary is saddled with huge backlog. I appreciate that, but I feel that the uh, that the strict timelines given by the Act are not being followed. And one of the main reasons which I I I feel that the that is really not uh, I mean uh, sparing use or the non-use of Section 20. That is according to me, this is the key to the success of the Act. India is one of the very few countries where the 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 these uh, public officers are being penalized for for not supplying the information but this is a i mean perhaps the legislature realized how difficult it would be to extract information from indian bureaucracy in the absence of such a penal clause but the use of that penal clause is very necessary see the, if there is a delay it's a duty i mean it's a, why duty is the commission is statutorily bound to inquire into that case issue a show cause to the public official concerned and ask for explanation from him from him and if that explanation is not it doesn't disclose any circumstances within the parameter of section 21 and there is no justification within the meaning of the section the information commission has no option but to impose fine on the concerned official and the fine should be computed from the date of the expiry of the period which is prescribed by the act in many commissions i find that the that this there is 